Apollo 12, Wikipedia article audio. Apollo 12 was the sixth manned flight in the United States Apollo program and the second to land on the moon. It was launched on November 14, 1969, from the Kennedy Space Center, Florida, four months after Apollo 11. Mission Commander Charles Pete Conrad and Lunar Module Pilot Alan L. Bean performed just over one day and seven hours of lunar surface activity while Command Module Pilot Richard F. Gordon remained in lunar orbit. The landing site for the mission was located in the southeastern portion of the Ocean of Storms. Unlike the first landing on Apollo 11, Conrad and Bean achieved a precise landing at their expected location, the site of the Surveyor 3 unmanned probe, which had landed on April 20, 1967. They carried the first color television camera to the lunar surface on an Apollo flight, but transmission was lost after Bean accidentally destroyed the camera by pointing it at the Sunday. On one of two moonwalks, they visited the surveyor and removed some parts for return to Earth. The mission ended on November 24 with a successful splashdown. Crew Backup Crew Apollo 12 launched on schedule from Kennedy Space Center, during a rainstorm. It was the first rocket launch attended by an incumbent U.S. President, Richard Nixon. 36 and a half seconds after liftoff, the vehicle triggered a lightning discharge through itself and down to the Earth through the Saturn's ionized plume. Protective circuits on the fuel cells in the service module falsely detected overloads and took all three fuel cells offline, along with much of the command-slash-service module instrumentation. A second strike at 52 seconds after launch knocked out the 8-ball attitude indicator. The telemetry stream at mission control was garbled. However, the vehicle continued to fly correctly, the strikes had not affected the Saturn V instrument unit. The loss of all three fuel cells put the CSM entirely on batteries which were unable to maintain normal 75 ampere launch loads on the 28 volt DC bus. One of the AC inverters dropped offline. These power supply problems lit nearly every warning light on the control panel and caused much of the instrumentation to malfunction. Electrical, Environmental, and Consumables Manager John Aaron remembered the telemetry failure pattern from an earlier test when a power supply malfunctioned in the CSM signal conditioning electronics, which converted raw signals from instrumentation to standard voltages for the spacecraft instrument displays and telemetry encoders. Aaron made a call, try SCE to auxiliary which switched the SCE to a backup power supply. The switch was fairly obscure, and neither flight director Gerald Griffin, Capcom Gerald Carr, nor mission commander Pete Conrad immediately recognized it. Lunar module pilot Alan Bean, flying in the right seat as the spacecraft systems engineer, remembered the SCE switch from a training incident a year earlier when the same failure had been simulated. Aaron's quick thinking and Bean's memory saved what could have been an aborted mission, and earned Aaron the reputation of a steely-eyed missile man. Bean put the fuel cells back online, and with telemetry restored, the launch continued successfully. Once in Earth parking orbit, the crew carefully checked out their spacecraft before reigniting the SIVB third stage for translunar injection. The lightning strikes had caused no serious permanent damage. Initially, it was feared that the lightning strike could have caused the command module S parachute mechanism to prematurely fire, disabling the explosive bolts that open the parachute compartment to deploy them. If they were indeed disabled, the command module would have crashed uncontrollably into the Pacific Ocean and killed the crew instantly. 
Since there was no way to figure out whether or not this was the case, ground controllers decided not to tell the astronauts about the possibility. The parachutes deployed and functioned normally at the end of the mission. Support Crew After lunar module separation, the SIVB was intended to fly into solar orbit. The SIVB auxiliary propulsion system was fired, and the remaining propellants vented to slow it down to fly past the moon's trailing edge. The moon's gravity would then slingshot the stage into solar orbit. However, a small error in the state vector in the Saturn's guidance system caused the SIVB to fly past the moon at too high an altitude to achieve Earth escape velocity. It remained in a semi-stable Earth orbit after passing the moon on November 18, 1969. It finally escaped Earth orbit in 1971 but was briefly recaptured in Earth orbit 31 years later. It was discovered by amateur astronomer Bill Jung who gave it the temporary designation J002E3 before it was determined to be an artificial object. The Apollo 12 mission landed on November 19, 1969, on an area of the ocean of storms that had been visited earlier by several unmanned missions. The International Astronomical Union, recognizing this, christened this region Mercognitum. The lunar coordinates of the landing site were 3.01239 degrees south latitude, 23.42157 degrees west longitude. The landing site would thereafter be listed as Statio Cognitum on lunar maps. Conrad and Bean did not formally name their landing site, though Conrad nicknamed the intended touchdown area Pete's parking lot. Flight Directors The second lunar landing was an exercise in precision targeting, which would be needed for future Apollo missions. Most of the descent was automatic, with manual control assumed by Conrad during the final few hundred feet of descent. Unlike Apollo 11, where Neil Armstrong had to use the manual control to direct his lander downrange of the computer's target which was strewn with boulders, Apollo 12 succeeded in landing at its intended target within walking distance of the Surveyor 3 probe, which had landed on the moon in April 1967. This was the first and, to date, only occasion in which humans have caught up to a probe sent to land on another world. Conrad actually landed intrepid 580 feet short of Pete's parking lot, because it looked rougher during final approach than anticipated, and was a little under 1,180 feet from Surveyor 3, a distance that was chosen to eliminate the possibility of lunar dust from covering Surveyor 3. But the actual touchdown point approximately 600 feet from Surveyor 3 did cause high-velocity sandblasting of the probe. It was later determined that the sandblasting removed more dust than it delivered onto the surveyor, because the probe was covered by a thin layer that gave it a tan hue as observed by the astronauts, and every portion of the surface exposed to the direct sandblasting was lightened back toward the original white color through the removal of lunar dust. When Conrad, who was somewhat shorter than Neil Armstrong, stepped onto the lunar surface, his first words were whoopee. Man, that may have been a small one for Neil, but that's a long one for me. This was not an off-the-cuff remark, Conrad had made a 500 US dollar bet with reporter Oriana Felici he would say these words, after she had queried whether NASA had instructed Neil Armstrong what to say as he stepped onto the moon. Conrad later said he was never able to collect the money. Mission Parameters To improve the quality of television pictures from the moon, a color camera was carried on Apollo 12. Unfortunately, when Bean carried the camera to the place near the lunar module where it was to be set up, 
he inadvertently pointed it directly into the sun, destroying the secondary electron conduction tube. Television coverage of this mission was thus terminated almost immediately. See also, Apollo TV camera. LMCSM docking. Apollo 12 successfully landed within walking distance of the Surveyor 3 probe. Conrad and Bean removed pieces of the probe to be taken back to Earth for analysis. It is claimed that the common bacterium Streptococcus mitis was found to have accidentally contaminated the spacecraft's camera prior to launch and survived dormant in this harsh environment for two and a half years. However, this finding has since been disputed, see reports of Streptococcus mitis on the Moon. Extravehicular Activities Astronauts Conrad and Bean also collected rocks and set up equipment that took measurements of the Moon's seismicity, solar wind flux and magnetic field, and relayed the measurements to Earth. The instruments were part of the first complete nuclear-powered ALSEP station set up by astronauts on the Moon to relay long-term data from the lunar surface. The instruments on Apollo 11 were not as extensive or designed to operate long term. The astronauts also took photographs, although by accident Bean left several rolls of exposed film on the lunar surface. Meanwhile, Gordon, on board the Yankee Clipper in lunar orbit, took multi-spectral photographs of the surface. The lunar plaque attached to the descent stage of Intrepid is unique in that unlike the other plagues, it did not have a depiction of the Earth, and it was textured differently, the other plagues had black lettering on polished stainless steel while the Apollo 12 plaque had the lettering in polished stainless steel while the background was brushed flat. EVA 1 Start, November 19, 1969 11 hours 32 minutes and 35 seconds UTC. Intrepid's ascent stage was dropped after Conrad and Bean rejoined Gordon in orbit. It impacted the Moon on November 20, 1969, at 3 degrees 56 minutes south 21 degrees 12 minutes west slash 3.94 degrees south 21.20 degrees west slash dash 3.94, 21.20. The seismometers the astronauts had left on the lunar surface registered the vibrations for more than an hour. The crew stayed an extra day in lunar orbit taking photographs for a total lunar surface stay of 31 and a half hours and a total time in lunar orbit of 89 hours. On the return flight to Earth after leaving lunar orbit, the crew of Apollo 12 witnessed a solar eclipse, though this one was of the Earth eclipsing the Sunday. Yankee Clipper returned to Earth on November 24, 1969 at 2058 UTC, in the Pacific Ocean, approximately 500 nautical miles east of American Samoa. During splashdown, a 16mm film camera dislodged from storage and struck Bean in the forehead, rendering him briefly unconscious. He suffered a mild concussion and needed six stitches. After recovery by USS Hornet, they were flown to Pago Pago International Airport in Tafuna for a reception, before being flown on a C-141 cargo plane to Honolulu. The Apollo 12 mission patch shows the crew's Navy background, all three astronauts at the time of the mission were U.S. Navy commanders. It features a clipper ship arriving at the moon, representing the command module Yankee Clipper. The ship trails fire, and flies the flag of the United States. The mission name Apollo 12 and the crew names are on a wide gold border, with a small blue trim. Blue and gold are traditional U.S. Navy colors. The patch has four stars on it one each for the three astronauts who flew the mission and one for Clifton Williams, 
a U.S. Marine Corps aviator and astronaut who was killed on October 5, 1967, after a mechanical failure caused the controls of his T-38 trainer to stop responding, resulting in a crash. He trained with Conrad and Gordon as part of the backup crew for what would be the Apollo 9 mission, and would have been assigned as Lunar Module Pilot for Apollo 12. EVA 1 End, November 19, 15 hours 28 minutes and 38 seconds UTC The Apollo 12 Command Module Yankee Clipper is on display at the Virginia Air and Space Center in Hampton, Virginia. EVA 2 Start, November 20, 1969, 3 hours 54 minutes and 45 seconds UTC. In 2002, astronomers thought they might have discovered another moon orbiting Earth, which they designated J002E3, that turned out to be the SIVB third stage of the Apollo 12 Saturn V rocket. Apollo 12 Mission Report, NASA, MSC 01855, March 1970, Apollo 12 Preliminary Science Report, NASA, NASA SP 235, 1970, NASA Apollo 12 Press Kit, NASA, Release No. 69-148, November 5, 1969. Analysis of Apollo 12 Lightning Incident, February 1970, Analysis of Surveyor 3 Material and Photographs Returned by Apollo 12 1972, Examination of Surveyor 3 Surface Sampler Scoop Returned by Apollo 12 Mission 1971, Table 2-40 Apollo 12 Characteristics from NASA Historical Data Book, Volume 3 Programs and Projects 1969-1978 by Linda Newman Ezel, NASA History Series, The Apollo Spacecraft, A Chronology NASA, NASA SP 4009, Apollo Program Summary Report, NASA, JSC 09423, April 1975. The lunar module Intrepid impacted the Moon November 20, 1969 at 22,17,17.7 UT 3 degrees 56 minutes south 21 degrees 12 minutes west slash 3.94 degrees south 21.20 degrees west slash dash 3.94, 21.20. In 2009, the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter photographed the Apollo 12 landing site. The Intrepid Lunar Module Descent Stage, Experiment Package, Surveyor 3 spacecraft, and astronaut footpaths are all visible. In 2011, the LRO returned to the landing site at a lower altitude to take higher resolution photographs. Portions of the Apollo 12 mission are dramatized in the mini-series From the Earth to the Moon episode entitled That's All There Is. Conrad, Gordon, and Bean were portrayed by Paul McCrane, Tom Verica, and Dave Foley, respectively. Conrad had been portrayed by a different actor, Peter Scolari, in the first episode. The short film Apollo 12 Pinpoint for Science is available for free download at the Internet Archive, Apollo 12 The Bernie Scrivener Audio Tapes Apollo 12 Audio Recordings at the Apollo 12 Flight Journal, Apollo 12, There and Back Again Image Slideshow by Life Magazine, Apollo 12 Patch Image of Apollo 12 Mission Patch this article incorporates public domain material from websites or documents of the National Aeronautics and Space Administration. EVA 2 End, November 20, 7 hours and 44 minutes UTC. Mission Highlights Launch and Transfer Moon Landing NASA Reports Multimedia
Evas. Return. Splashdown. Stunts and mementos. Mission insignia. Spacecraft location. Depiction in media. Bibliography.